and welcome to another episode of What's Hot. I am Lovedale. And I'm Manuel Myers. And we're joined here today by Kendrick. Kendrick is a spoken word artist. He's also one of the founders of After Party Entertainment and he's also radio host for After Party Radio. Welcome to the show, Kendrick. Thank you, man. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Man, yeah. it's a pleasure. We've got some interesting things for you today I'm to talk ready. about, I'm right? <laughs> Racism. Is UK, the ooh, UK... Ooh, ooh, ooh. A racist country is there still racism in the UK now I bring this up because there are so many conversations that are going on in media on social media about racism and you know there's people are like yes the country's still racist other people are like no we're not at all that's been dead and gone however many years back but I was looking at some statistics right racist incidents have increased in London by 25% between 2015 and 2019 now the interesting thing about that that in itself is shocking but what the other interesting thing is, in the majority of cases, the person who has committed the crime claim that they're not racist. I think when, when it comes to racism within the UK, mm -hmm. like I think I, I must have mentioned it earlier, like it seems like it's politely packaged. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, like I love that. Americans, they, you know, it's, they, they have the gun. They have the gun <laughs> and they point it right at you. Mm -hmm. in, in the UK, they, they'd wrap it up and then put a nice bow on it and, and then they put it within institutions and say mm -hmm. like no we're not racist and I think there's this whole connotation around Great Britain being so great mm -hmm. you know we're, you. We're, we're, we're polite you know we, we English all we do is eat we, we, we go for afternoon tea we drink tea you know what I'm saying we, we, we take care of one another say hello good morning how are you doing but within that act there there's a lot of people like to refer to it as subconscious and but inherent racism which hasn't been touched upon. And I think when it comes to the conversation of race, I think maybe perhaps I'm, I'm 22, so I kind of s steal into the millennial stage. So during that millennial, millennial period, when we were kind of growing up, we weren't seeing the bare brunt of it in terms of the media. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of interpersonal um, relations, you'd, you, might, you might come across it on your, in your day to day, even at your, uh, a young age. But now where we have social media and there's this whole thing of everyone being vocal about everything. Mm -hmm. So with America, with the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. and you know, the, taking, the NFL taking a knee mm -hmm. protest, that is in our face. And the UK kind of latches onto it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then we follow suit with, you know, with what we're doing in terms of, um, I think what was the most recent thing that I can imagine? Like stuff going on in universities, um, I think there was an instance where a student at work, she was she was the victim of racial abuse within her accommodation. Mm. There was a video made about it, and within like an hour, within a day, it was been it had been sent around the whole of Twitter. Mm. The all the African Caribbean societies of every across the UK had had access to that and had retweeted it, and it gained so much heat that it ended up on this morning. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's come to a point where, as much as people are are being more vocal about racism. There's also a lot of people speaking out, but like actually perpetrating it, as you said, from the statistics. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I think, like you say, it's kind of come back and forth. I think if you look at maybe our parents or grandparents' generation, where it was very overt racism, mm -hmm. because they wanted to survive, they didn't really fight back as much, right? So I think that kind of passiveness started to get p passed down. So for our generation, prior to the social media movement, um, because we can survive and we can manage, we don't make any noise about some of the um, racial events that we face. But then now with things really heating up, like you've mentioned with yeah. some of the stuff that's mm -hmm. going on in America, with people like Trump in power, yeah, um, with Brexit in the UK, Indeed. with having people like Boris Johnson as our dear Prime Minister, <laughs> um, it started to bring up, it's coming in your face now, so you can't ignore it anymore. You can't just survive and go to day to day and be like, I'm surviving, it's fine, because it's in your face. And I think um, being in London, I think if it, growing up in London, because mm -hmm. it's so multicultural, Definitely. you miss it a bit. Absolutely. But as you come out of London to some of the other cities in London, you do start to see some overt, overt racism. Yeah. Yes, you do. I remember yes. going up to the um, southeast of England for a show, and that was the first time in my whole life that I've heard a white person use the N-word in real life. Wow. So I'm in the city centre, and he was talking about, um, he wanted to come and beat up, like they want to go after some black guy and use the N-word. And we're like, 
it was like proper shock factor for me because I'd not yeah. heard anyone using that. You, you yeah. might hear it in media, like American media, but in the and it's like, yeah. no one is shocked. Everyone's yeah. comfortable with this. It's the norm in this particular area. And that was a major culture shock for me being from London. Cause it's like, no one would dare. Yeah. Like, yeah, do you in know London, what I mean? I think we, be we become, delu not delusional, <laughs> but we kind of become like desensitized to the fact that Emotionally numb, B yeah. B-A-M-E, Black Asians, that ethnic minority mm -hmm. group. Black people make 3% of the population in the UK. Mm -hmm. That's 3%. <laughs> like, of, of 70 or however million people um, is in the UK. And I don't know the maths behind that, but 3% is looking, it's looking skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and yeah. that, is, that is concentrated in London, Birmingham. <laughs> and maybe, I don't know, maybe you might get... Every, everyone from London going to Coventry to, or Leicester to <laughs> yeah, go raving so. or whatnot. But like sometimes we kind of, being in London, we, we see so much multiculturalism. I'm from Peckham, so uh, like mm. I, I get a taste of everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's like a little global centre yeah. in London. And then once you start stepping out and, you move it, and you're moving out into like places like Bognor Regis and you're expecting to see someone like, like to you. identify you know, with you know someone, what I mean? yes. Like sometimes when you see someone who's black, you kind of give them a, 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 a <laughs> yeah. I know, a, I know, you know what's going on mm -hmm. sort of nod. And that sort of acknowledgement in, th in those spaces, you don't get that yeah. at all. And I just want to take it back to the statistics real quickly, yeah. guys. Um, so in 2015 and 16, 12,784 people reported incidents. But in 2018, 19, that number sort of like skyrocketed to 16,037. So See? that shows That's that racism telling. is on a rise. Which is crazy, yeah. isn't it? Because we feel like we're so progressive. Mm -hmm. Like we're like, oh, you know, society, we've come so far with... All, all, in all these different areas. So why are, is this statistic rising? It's like we're literally going backwards. Thank you. And it's quite scary that people are in denial. Now, here's my thing is, if I feel like something you've said to me is racist, it's not up to you to tell me that it's not. That lies with me and what I find offensive, what yes. I find racist. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So do you think so racism is a personal thing? I wouldn't, no, 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 oh, not, not no. necessarily. I think there is racism that we all experience in yeah. general, but there's certain incidences um, that are very specific, they're not generic, they're very specific. It could be an mm -hmm. incident that happens at work. Yeah. Then you would say, this was racial, I have an issue with this. And then that person or other people that are not your, of your race telling you it's not racist, you can't tell me what is and isn't racist. Yes. Yeah. I am black, <laughs> what you said to me is offensive and it is racial, Indeed. period. And I think, so I think, you know, there's a duty on people that are not ethnic, i.e. Caucasian, yes. to listen. Yeah. It's not up to you, them to dictate and say, no, we're not, no. I'm telling you, there's some ignorance here, something that you're saying or something that you're doing is racial. You need to listen and adjust. Yeah. You should, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I think, um, yeah, the, obviously having the conversations are important, but if, no, if they're not listening, then the racial tension is just gonna continue to rise. In terms of accountability as well, I think the, se the same accountability that is reserved for other issues isn't, is not reflected when it comes to race. Yes, yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. I feel like, not to use this instance, but um, given the Kevin Hart situation, mm -hmm. um, where he was this, like he was stripped of um, his Oscar host. Well, he was host, yeah, he was stripped an of an opportunity. Of, yeah, yes. stripped of that opportunity due to things that were said into the past, which he apologised for on countless, countless, um, countless um, okay, instances yeah. leading up to that. Mm -hmm. Long like it had been dead and buried, but. Somehow, somewhat, people felt the need to go into his past and, and know, bring it back to haunt him. Yeah, he had to face the accountability of those okay. things. Yeah, but we've however, seen that. however, yeah, when it sorry. comes to sorry, when yeah. it comes to matters of race and certain people who've in the past and even recently, in fact, thank you, s dropped something that's very much racist and it's been pointed out. They've walked away with, "I'm sorry, guys," and nothing's happened to them on a on a on a large scale level, like it's happened to Kevin Hart. Yeah, but I just want to go there for a minute. So we've seen it happen time after time again. So we've seen it with Meghan Markle, how she's constantly victimised within the media. We've seen it with black football players like Raheem Sterling. Yeah. We've seen it in football. Racism is very much in football, do you know? Like most of its foundations are built from that time. And even, let's take it on to the Windrush generation, for God's sake. Yeah. Look at what happened to those. People were taken from their home countries, brought here to build up this great Britain, as we say it is. And then the Home Office after sort of erasing or 
I guess I, the, the landing crazy. cards, yeah, literally yeah. you just kind of wipe the landing cards out of existence yeah. and then now these people are losing jobs, they're losing houses, they're losing, and they're being deported to go back home. So what more, how, like, what more, how, how much more vigilant does racism need to be for us to accept that it's still prominent and it's something that we're still very much dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you know something? I feel yeah. like <laughs> this is going to be an ongoing conversation. Indeed, Like yes. I, having conversations like this is what's going to help. So, Kendra, what's your final thoughts? on this um in in the subject of race like in the uk it is very very much prevalent it cannot be excused and it's a it's i don't think it will ever come to a point where racism will be mitigated because from an institutional level there is so much that needs to be done from the ground up mm -hmm. and also on an interpersonal level there is so much that needs to be done and the difference is if people aren't willing to accept the differences between us and allow that to cultivate something that is beautiful as the communities that we kind of experience in London, then it will never be something that we can even kind of, you know, pipe down. Yeah. It will always be an ongoing topic. Yeah. What about you, Mane? Final thoughts? Final thoughts on the subject matter. I personally feel that racism it's an absolute choice. People decide that they're going to be racism. You know right, you know wrong. So I feel like until it needs to be dealt with on an individual level um, and not sort of like an, a, a mass level, mm. you know, because even mm. if someone's influenced by something, say it's from their household, you as an individual can decide that that's not the path for you. Definitely. So I think it's people and it's a personal thing that needs to start happening yeah. within oneself. I agree yeah. with both of you, and I think um, we've seen like a 40% rise in racist incidents in primary school. Yeah. So that says to me, like you said, from the ground up for institutions, for the ground up for children. Mm -hmm. So maybe going back into the schools, into the nurseries, and really making sure that you're educating these ch children on inclusivity and understanding that we are all the same. It doesn't matter what colour skin we are, we, we bleed the same. Yeah, Our yeah. blood is red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think doing that would really help then for generations to come to make a I difference, mean, I think. We've got, we've got to, we've got to realise that some of us got more melanin than the other. <laughs> well, That's the whole this thing. Is true. This, this is, is true. true. Yeah. That's true. We could literally talk about this all day. There's so much that we could go into. Agreed. But unfortunately, we need to take a short break. <laughs> but make sure you don't go anywhere. Honestly, we're going to start chopping up some real interesting trending topics that I know you're going to be into. We're talking coronavirus. I know you're scared, so come back and let's talk about it. <laughs> we're also going to be talking about a student from Texas who's been excluded because he's got dreadlocks. I know you're mad. Make sure you come back after the break. Let's chop it up. See you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you really liked this episode, like, comment and subscribe on Yangi TV. Join us next week where we're gonna get hot again.